welcome back to another math lesson hosted by Book and Table. I am your math tutor, Maurice Wright, and this video is practice set number one to our solving equations chapter. In this video, you'll have a chance to complete 17 questions that help you practice removing constants, coefficients, and solving for a specific variable in an equation. Should you have any follow-up questions, feel free to leave them in our comment section, or you can contact a tutor in your neighborhood by visiting bookandtable.com or by downloading our app on the App Store. Okay, so let's begin. Question number one. Solve for x and check the answer. x minus five is equal to 15. Pause the video for a moment to solve this question and then press play when you are ready. Step one, remove the constant that is on the same side as our x term, which is negative five, by adding five to both sides. This allows us to negate the constant, negative five plus five would be zero, x plus zero is just x. So we've successfully isolated x on one side. And remember, you must keep the equation balanced. So whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you must do to the other side. And that leaves us with 15 plus five, which has a value of 20. So the answer that we get for question number one is x is equal to 20. And then step two, to check this answer, plug it back into the original equation x minus five is equal to 15. And when you do so, you replace the x with our answer, 20. And now you simplify the expressions. So 20 minus five would be 15. And you see that the left side has the same value as the right side, which means we've successfully found the value of x, which is 20. Okay, so the answer to question number one is x is equal to 20. Let's take a look at question number two. Solve for x and check the answer. Negative seven plus x is equal to negative two. Pause the video and solve this question, then press play when you are ready to begin. Step one, remove the constant negative seven that's the constant on the same side as the variable we want to solve for, which is x. So you remove the constant negative seven by adding seven to both sides. Negative seven plus seven is zero, leaving you with just x on the left side. And on the right side, we wind up with negative two plus seven, which equals five. So the answer to question number two is x is equal to five. Step two, we want to check this answer by plugging it back into the original equation here, negative seven plus x is equal to negative two, to make sure that both sides of the equation are balanced. When we replace x with five, which was our answer, we get negative seven plus five, which equals negative two on the left side, and that matches the value on the right side, negative two. So this confirms that x is equal to five. Let's move on to question number three. Solve for x and check the answer. 2 thirds x is equal to 10. Pause the video to solve this question, then press play when you are ready. You want to eliminate this coefficient by multiplying it by its reciprocal. The reciprocal is the result of switching the number in the numerator and the number in the denominator. So two goes from the numerator to the denominator. Three goes from the denominator to the numerator. So step one, remove the coefficient, two thirds, by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal of the coefficient, the reciprocal being three halves. And then when you do that, this coefficient is negated, leaving us with x on the left side. And now on the right side, our 10, which is the same as 10 over one, the 10 multiplies times the three in the numerator, leaving us with 30 over two, and that would simplify to 15. So the answer to question number three is 
x is equal to 15. Now we check this again by plugging it back into the original equation, 2 thirds x is equal to 10. And when we do so, replace the x with 15. So we wind up with 2 times 15 in the numerator, which equals 30. 30 divided by 3 is equal to 10. So we confirm that the value on the left equals the value on the right, which means we found the correct answer or the correct value for x, which is 15. Okay, so the answer to question number three is x is equal to 15. Let's move on to question number four. This one is similar. Solve for x and check the answer. 3 fifths x is equal to 9. Pause the video, solve this question, then press play when you are ready. Step one, remove the coefficient 3 fifths by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal, which would be 5 thirds. When we do so, we negate our coefficient, leaving us with just x on the left side. On the right side, we multiply our 9 times the number in the numerator, which is 5. That would give us 45. 45 divided by 3 is equal to 15. So the answer to question number 4 is x is equal to 15. And then you check this answer by plugging it back into the original equation. 3 fifths x is equal to 9. Replace x with our answer, 15. That leaves us with 45 in the numerator. 45 divided by 5 is equal to 9. So we see that we found the correct value for x, which is 15. Question number 5. Solve for x and check the answer. Negative 5x plus 1 is equal to 21. Pause the video, solve this question, then press play when you're ready. Step 1, first remove the constant on the same side as the x. So remove the constant positive 1 by subtracting 1 from both sides. This leaves you with negative 5x on the left side of the equal sign. And on the right side, we have 21 minus 1, which leaves us with 20. Now we must remove this coefficient, negative 5. So step 2, remove the coefficient, negative 5, by dividing both sides by negative 5. We do that. We wind up with x on the left side. And on the right side, 20 divided by negative 5 is equal to negative 4. So the answer to question number five is x is equal to negative four. Okay, and then we check this, step three, by plugging it into the original equation, negative five x plus one is equal to 21. When we plug in negative four for x, negative five times negative four would give us positive 20. 20 plus one would give us 21. So we see that the value on the left side equals the value on the right side, which means we found the correct value for x, which is negative 4. So the answer to question number 5 is x is equal to negative 4. Let's take a look at question number 6. Solve for x and check the answer. x divided by 2 minus 6 is equal to 18. Pause the video, solve this question, and then press play when you're ready. Step one, remove the constant negative six by adding six to both sides. This leaves you with x divided by two on the left side and 18 plus six, which is 24 on the right side. So now we want to eliminate this coefficient one half, right, one over two. 1 times x is just x. So we want to eliminate the coefficient 1 half. How do we do that? Step 2, multiply both sides by the reciprocal, which would be 2, right? 2 over 1. When you do that, this 2 and this 2 cancel out, leaving you with x on the left side. 24 times 2 gives us 48. So the answer to question number 6 is x is equal to 48. We check this, step three, by plugging it into the original equation. 
x divided by 2 minus 6 is equal to 18. And when we plug 48 in for x, we have 48 divided by 2, which equals 24, minus 6 would give us 18. And then we see here that 18 equals 18, which means this is the correct value for x. So the answer to question number 6 is x is equal to 48. Let's go to lucky number seven. Solve for x and check the answer. Negative two x divided by seven plus four is equal to 12. Pause the video, solve this question, then press play when you're ready. Step one, remove the constant positive four by subtracting four from both sides. That leaves us with negative 2x over 7 on the left side and 12 minus 4, which is 8, on the right side. Now we want to negate this coefficient here, negative 2 sevenths. So to do that, step 2, we multiply both sides by the reciprocal, negative 7 over 2. The negative times negative gives us positive, so those negate. 7 divided by 7 is 1, 2 divided by 2 is 1, so we negate the coefficient, leaving us with x on the left side. On the right side, 8 times 7 is 56, so we have negative 56 over 2, and that would simplify to x is equal to negative 28. Check this, step 3, by plugging it into the original equation. When we do so, negative 2 times negative 28 is positive 56. 56 divided by 7 is 8. 8 plus 4 is 12. So we see that when x is equal to negative 28, the value on the left equals the value on the right. All right, so the answer to question number 7 is x is equal to negative 28. Question number 8, solve for x and check the answer. Negative 3 minus x over 11 is equal to 15. Pause the video, solve this question, and then press play when you are ready. Step one, remove the constant negative three by adding three to both sides. When we do so, we wind up with negative x over 11 on the left side. And on the right side, 15 plus 3 gives us 18. Step 2, remove the coefficient negative 1 over 11 by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal, which would be negative 11 over 1. The 11s cancel out, leaving us with x on the left side. On the right side, 18 times negative 11 is negative 198. So the answer to question number 8 is x is equal to negative 198. And we can check this answer by plugging it into the original equation. Negative 3 minus x over 11 is equal to 15. When we do so, we wind up with negative 3 minus negative 198. Negative 1 times negative 198 makes that positive. 198 divided by 11 is equal to 18. Negative 3 plus 18 is 15. So when x is equal to negative 198, the left side of the equation equals the right side. So this is the correct answer. x is equal to negative 198. Moving right along to question number 9. Solve for x and check the answer. Negative 2x plus 6 is equal to 14. Pause the video, solve this question, then press play when you are ready. Step 1, we still want to first remove this constant from the same side. So remove the constant positive 6 by subtracting 6 from both sides. That leaves you with negative 2 over x is equal to 14 minus 6, which is 8. Step 2, what we want to do is we don't want this in the denominator, so we're going to multiply both sides by x. 
x divided by x would be 1, but 8 times x would be 8x. So 8x, I just moved it to the left side. I like having the x on the left. So 8x is equal to negative 2. And now our x is in the numerator instead of the denominator. So we can remove this coefficient the way we normally would by dividing both sides by 8. So that's step 3. And now that leaves us with x is equal to negative 2 divided by 8, which is x is equal to negative 1 fourth. So this would be the answer to question number 9. And we check this by plugging it into the original equation. Negative 2 divided by a fraction is the same as multiplying the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. So negative 2 times the reciprocal would be negative 4 over 1, which is negative 4. So this term, negative 2 divided by negative 1 fourth, is equal to negative 2 times negative 4. That would be equal to positive 8. 8 plus 6 would be equal to 14. So when x is equal to negative 1 fourth, the left side equals the right side. So this is the correct answer to question number 9. x is equal to negative 1 fourth. Let's try another one similar to that. Question number 10. Solve for x and check the answer. 5 plus 4 divided by x is equal to 33. Pause the video, solve this question, then press play when you are ready. Step 1. Remove the constant positive 5 by subtracting 5 from both sides. That leaves you with 4 divided by x on the left side and 33 minus 5, which is 28 on the right side. Now step 2, we want to bring this x from the denominator up to the numerator. We do that by multiplying both sides by x. The x's on the left cancel out, leaving us with just 4. 28 times x leaves us with 28x. Now we can remove this coefficient, 28, by dividing both sides by 28. So that's step number 3. So we wind up with x is equal to 4 divided by 28, which is x is equal to 1 7th. And then check this by plugging it back into the original equation. And again, we wind up dividing a term by a fraction, which means you multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. So if we switch the 7 and the 1, we wind up with 7 over 1, which 7 divided by 1 is 7. 4 times 7 is 28. So on the left side of the equation, we wind up with 5 plus 28, which is equal to 33. And that's equal to the value on the right side. So x is equal to 1 7th is the answer to question number 10. Let's have a look at question number 11. Things get a little bit more difficult because now we have our x term on both sides of the equal sign. So solve for x and check the answer. Negative 4x plus 2 thirds is equal to x. Pause the video, solve this question, then press play when you are ready. We can move this one to the left or this one to the right. Since the constant is on this side, I'm just going to move the x term from the left to the right. So we do that by adding 4x to both sides. Negative 4x and positive 4x cancel, leaving us with just 2 thirds on one side. We have x plus 4x, leaving us with 5x on the other side. And now we want to remove this coefficient 5. So we do so by dividing both sides by 5 or multiplying both sides by the reciprocal. This is 5 over 1, so the reciprocal would be 1 fifth. So we wind up with x is equal to 2 over 15. Now step 3, we check this answer by plugging it into the original equation. Negative 4x plus 2 thirds is equal to x. We wind up with negative 4 times 2 which is negative 8 over 15. 2 thirds, we convert to 15 by multiplying it by 5 over 5. 2 times 5 would be 10. 3 times 5 gives us the 
denominator we want, which is 15. So we can combine these fractions. And this was equal to x, which is equal to 2 fifteenths. And now we can combine these two terms. Negative 8 plus 10 would give us positive 2. So when x is equal to 2 fifteenths, the left side is equal to the right side. So that is the correct answer. x is equal to 2 fifteenths. Question number 12. Solve for x and check the answer. 2x minus 7 eighths is equal to 1 half plus 3x. Pause the video, solve this question, then press play when you are ready. Step one, we want to combine our x terms by subtracting 2x from both sides. That leaves us with negative 7 eighths on one side of our equal sign and 1 half plus 3x minus 2x, which would just be positive 1x on the other side. So x plus 1 half is equal to negative 7 eighths. And now we want to remove this constant from this side, but we need this constant and this constant on this side to have the same denominator if we want to combine them. So we want to convert this fraction on the left, 1 half, to a denominator of 8 and we do so by multiplying it by 4 over 4. 1 times 4 would be 4, 2 times 4 would be 8. Again, any number or fraction times 1 is equal to itself. So we're not changing the value of 1 half on this side of the equal sign. We are simply changing how we represent the value of 1 half. 1 divided by 2 and 4 divided by 8 are both equal to 0 0.5. Okay, so now we have an equation that's a little bit easier to simplify. So step three, remove the constant 4 eighths by subtracting 4 eighths from both sides. That leaves you with x is equal to negative 7 eighths minus 4 eighths, which would be negative 11 eighths. Then the last step, number four, check the answer by plugging it into the original equation. So in both places where you see x, you plug in negative 11 over 8. That leaves you with 2 times negative 11, which is negative 22 over 8 here, minus 7 eighths is equal to 1 half, which is equal to 4 eighths, plus 3 times negative 11, which is negative 33 over 8. Negative 22 minus 7 would be negative 29 over 8. 4 minus 33 would be negative 29 over 8. So the answer to question number 12 is x is equal to negative 11 over 8. Question number 13. Solve for x and check the answer. 11x minus 3 is equal to negative x over 2 plus 4. Pause the video, solve this question, and then press play when you are ready. Step one, combine the constants by adding three to both sides. So we negate this negative three here, leaving you with 11x on one side, and negative x over two plus seven, four plus three is seven on the other side. We then want to combine our x terms. So we want to convert the x term on the left to a denominator of two. We do so by multiplying it by 2 over 2. 11x times 2 would be 22x over 2. And now we can move this term, negative x over 2, to this side of the equation. That would leave us with 22x over 2 plus x over 2. x, 1x, plus 22x would be 23x over 2. This term cancels out on the right, leaving you with just 7. And now you want to remove the coefficient 23 over 2 by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal, which would be 2 over 23. So that leaves you with x on one side. 7 times 2 would give you 14 over 23 on the other side. So the answer to question number 13 is 14 over 23. 
Now you check this answer by plugging it into the original equation. You do so in both places where you see x. 11 times 14 would be 154 over 23. If you multiply negative 4 times 23 over 23, you'll get negative 69 over 23. On the right side, we're placing a fraction in the numerator. Remember, if you have a fraction in the numerator or denominator, you can simplify it by multiplying the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. The reciprocal is 2 over 1, so you multiply it by 1 over 2. 14 20 thirds, our numerator, times the reciprocal of the denominator, plus 4. 1 times 14 is 14. 2 times 23 is 46. So on the left side, we had 85 over 23. On the right side, negative 14 over 46, plus change this 4 to a denominator of 46. So 46 times 4 would be 184 negative 14 plus 184 would be 170. But these denominators still don't match. But if we divide both the numerator and denominator by 2 here, we would wind up with 85 over 23. So that confirms that the answer to question 13 is x is equal to 14 20 thirds. Question number 14. Now we introduce absolute values. Solve for x and check the answers. The absolute value of negative x plus 2 is equal to 6. Pause the video, solve the question, then press play when you are ready. Step 1. We want to remove the absolute value signs from the expression. So that will leave you with negative x plus 2. But since the expression inside the absolute value signs can be negative or positive, we first want to solve this expression for the, for the possible negative value. So we take our positive 6 and we make that negative. So that's step 2. So now we have negative x plus 2 is equal to negative 6. So the third step is to solve for x. Remove the constant positive 2 by subtracting 2 from both sides. That leaves us with negative x is equal to negative 6 minus 2, which is negative 8. We then remove the coefficient, negative 1, by dividing both sides by negative 1, leaving us with the final answer, x is equal to 8. So that's one answer. We solve for the second answer by now changing this part of the expression to the positive value. Since the expression inside the absolute value sign can be negative or positive. The final result is going to be positive, but to make sure we understand what both possible values are, we solve for the positive value and the negative value. So here we'll solve for the positive value, positive 6. So negative x plus 2 is equal to 6, and now we want to solve for x. So we subtract 2 from both sides first, leaving us with 6 minus 2, which is equal to 4 on the other side. And now we remove our negative from in front of the x by dividing both sides by negative 1, leaving us with x is equal to 4 divided by negative 1, which is negative 4. So now we can check both of these answers by plugging them into the original equation. The absolute value of x plus 2 is equal to 6. So we first test out our first answer, 8. Negative 8 plus 2 would be negative 6. The absolute value of negative 6 is 6, so we get the same value on both sides of the equal sign, which means x is equal to 8 is correct. Now, more than one number is possible for our answer, so we have to check both answers that we got. If we plug in negative 4 for x, we get negative 1 times negative 4, which becomes positive 4, plus 2 is positive 6, the absolute value of 6 is 6, so once again, the value on the left equals the value on the right, which means x is equal to negative 4 is also an answer. Okay? Question number 15. Solve for x and check the answers. 
the absolute value of 7x minus 4 is equal to 25. Pause the video, solve the question, then press play when you are ready. Step 1. Remove the absolute value signs from the expression. That will leave you with 7x minus 4. And then step 2. We want to solve for the possible negative value of this expression, which is negative 25. And now step 3. We want to solve for x. So we first remove the constant, negative 4, by adding 4 to both sides, leaving us with 7x on one side and negative 25 plus 4, which is negative 21 on the other side. We must remove the coefficient 7 from the x, so we divide both sides by 7, leaving you with x is equal to negative 3. So x is equal to negative 3 is one answer. We find our second possible answer by setting the expression 7x minus 4 equal to the positive value of the expression and then we solve for x again. So we add 4 to both sides, leaving us with 7x is equal to 29. And then we negate this coefficient 7 by dividing both sides by 7, leaving us with x is equal to 29 over 7. Then the last step is to plug both of the answers back into the original equation. So when we plug negative 3 in for x, we get 7 times negative 3, which is negative 21. Negative 21 minus 4 is negative 25. The absolute value of negative 25 is 25. Since the values on both sides of the equal sign are the same, that means x is equal to negative 3 is the correct answer. We want to check our second answer, the second number that we got, which was 29 over 7. We plug that in for x. 7 over 7 cancel each other out, so that leaves us with 29 minus 4, which is 25. The absolute value of 25 is 25. So when x is equal to 29 over 7, both sides of the equation are the same, which means this is also a correct answer. All right, so hopefully you're picking up on how to solve these absolute value equations. Here's another one. Solve for x and check the answers. The absolute value of negative 2x plus 9 is equal to 17. Pause the video, solve this question, then press play when you are ready. Remove the absolute value signs from the expression. So that leaves us with negative 2x plus 9. And step two, set the expression equal to the negative value of the expression. So instead of positive 17, we're first going to solve for negative 17. And then we solve for x. So you first remove the constant, positive 9, by subtracting 9 from both sides, leaving you with 2x is equal to negative 17 minus 9, which is negative 26. And then you remove the coefficient negative 2 by dividing both sides by negative 2 leaving you with x is equal to 13. So this is one answer, x is equal to 13. We find our second answer by setting the expression equal to the positive value, which is positive 17, and then we solve for x. Subtract 9 from both sides to remove this constant, positive 9. That gives us negative 2x is equal to 17 minus 9, which is 8. We're dividing both sides by negative 2, so that's x is equal to 8 divided by negative 2, which is negative 4. Once again, you check both of these answers by plugging them into the original equation. If we plug 13 in for x, negative 2 times 13 is negative 26. Negative 26 plus 9 is negative 17. The absolute value of negative 17 is positive 17. So we see the left side equals the right side, which means x is equal to 13. Let's check our second answer, negative 4. Negative 2 times negative 4 is 8. 8 plus 9 is 17. The absolute value of 17 is 17. 17 is equal to 17. 
this proves that x is equal to negative 4 is a correct answer. All right. And now for our last practice question for this set. Question number 17. Solve for x and check the answers. The absolute value of 4x minus 1 is equal to 23. Pause the video, solve this question, then press play when you are ready. Remove the absolute value signs from the expression, leaving you with 4x minus 1 on the left side. And step two, we want to solve for the negative value, which would be negative 23. And then we solve for x. We negate negative 1 by adding 1 to both sides. So we wind up with 4x is equal to negative 23 plus 1, which is negative 22. Remove the coefficient 4 by dividing both sides by 4. So we divide both sides by 4, leaving us with x is equal to negative 22 over 4. All right, you can also simplify this to negative 11 over 2. Let's go ahead and solve for our second answer. Step 4, set the expression equal to the positive value of the expression. And then step 5, we solve for x. So we add 1 to both sides, leaving us with 4x is equal to 24. And then we remove the coefficient 4 by dividing both sides by 4, giving us the answer x is equal to 6. And now let's check both of these answers by plugging them back into the original equation. So we plug in negative 11 over 2, or if you still have negative 22 over 4, you'll wind up with the same answer at the end. 4 times negative 11 is negative 44, divided by 2 is negative 22. Negative 22 minus 1 is negative 23, and the absolute value of negative 23 is 23. So we wind up with 23 is equal to 23, which means the value we plugged in for x was correct. So x is equal to negative 11 over 2 is the correct answer for question number 17. Let's check our second answer, which is 6. Plug 6 in for x. That gives us 4 times 6, which is 24. 24 minus 1 is 23. The absolute value of 23 is 23. So again, 23 is equal to 23 confirms that x is also equal to 6. And that wraps up practice set number one for our solving equations chapter. If you have any follow-up questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section or connect with a tutor in your neighborhood by visiting bookandtable.com or by downloading our app on the App Store. Peace.